Welcome you all back to this uh, the next session here this morning. Marv Greer, our brethren, our live stream. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, for this morning's calling, I'd like for us to kind of use a base text of Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, which says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Now it's this phrase of, Come up hither, I want to focus on. The King James Version records 22 instances of the phrase, come hither, which includes his variations of come up hither, come near hither, come thou hither. Now of these uses, the phrase is used as a command 12 times, two of which are a command to not come hither. It's these 10 commands I want to kind of focus on here this morning. Now, I'm not going to read the entirety of each verse or even give and expound each verse that, that's given as a command, but I want to give you a sampling of why these things were, were said. In Joshua 3, 9, there is, Come hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. Uh -huh. Now, there have been inst instances where the Lord has given direct words to certain people. In the last two lessons we've had in Genesis, uh, we've seen the Lord has spoken directly to Laban, yet Laban could not receive this word because it was of a fleshly nature. The people of God are found where he is, and that is where we hear his words. Therefore, if we are to receive a word from the Lord, we have to be found in his presence. We are called, come hither, so we enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praises. And it is in such places that we hear the word of the Lord. We are so told in Ruth, uh, Boaz said to Ruth, Come thou hither and eat of the bread. In 2 Samuel, Come hither that I may send you to the king. Now this was kind of an interesting one. <coughs> so this is actually said uh, by Absalom to Joab when uh, David called Absalom back into the kingdom after having been banished. Absalom wanted to find out whether he was going to be killed or not by, the, by King David. However, even though the, that was the intent in this passage, I can still take comfort and uh, find consideration in this and saying that when we end our race here, it, it's going to be a great blessing for the Christ to say, Come hither, I will present you to the king. Amen. 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 There's also, Come hit near hither, that I may speak with thee. Again, that goes back to hear the words of the Lord. Ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. That was said by Nebuchadnezzar to the three Hebrew children coming out of the, out of the furnace. Come out of that trial. Come forth to me. To the Samaritan woman he said, Come hither, be given water that you may thirst no more. <coughs> and then there's four references in Revelation. There's a come up hither. He says, he says twice. The first time he says, I will show thee these things which must be hereafter, which we mentioned already. Second time was, come up hither, and your enemies will behold you. The other two references are, come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. Mm -hmm. The last time is, come hither, I will show thee the bride, the, li the lamb's wife. Yes, now, in this book, now in this book, like I said, that's re referenced four times. Now this is not due to some falling back or some sort of distraction that the Apostle John had, but because there is always more up ahead. Yeah. Similarly, we are called to come up hither, not because we have necessarily fallen away or because we're distracted by something else, but because there is something else up ahead. Yeah. For instance, there is a gospel until repentance. But the call has come out, gone out, come hither. We have, moved on from, we have moved on from laying a foundation and we are going to go on to greater things. For instance, we have Brother Jason's lesson this morning on the righteousness of God. That's gone beyond the gospel of repentance. There will be another call to come hither and we will see even more of God. When there is a call to come hither, there is going to be an impending blessing. The Lord would not make such a call if there were not going to be some sort of benefit for His people. Now in this... In the book of Revelation in particular, we can see that these blessings increase, and that's by nature. We are told that we will see the things that will happen first. We are then told we will, uh, our enemies will behold us. We are then told that we will see the judgment of the great whore. And finally, we will, be see, we will see the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. You can see how there's a, that Revelation is given in degrees. We've been seeing this again in the, this Genesis series, where things have, are ever increasing in the nature of King, the nature of the kingdom of God. You cannot receive a blessing of a higher order until you have received 
a previous blessing. There's actually prerequisite blessings that you can receive before you receive the next blessing. And that's when the call is given to come hither. The fact that we are told to come hither is evidence, actually, that we are being delivered. This call to shows that there is a table set before us in the presence of our enemies, a refuge found in Christ to whom we flee in the midst of trial and adversity. Now as we encounter trial and tribulation in this world, we hearken unto this call of Christ, and we draw nigh unto him. So this morning, let us heed this call to come hither, knowing that there are more things up ahead, and that there are even better things up ahead. Go ahead and have a prayer for this morning's meeting, and Sister Eve will come lead us in singing.